Hi, I'm Sergeant Artie Rodriguez. I'm a school resource deputy with the Walton County Sheriff's Office. Now this video is a presentation for citizens and students who want to know what happens after a juvenile has been arrested. Now the actress portraying the juvenile defendant, J.C. Jenkins, is a drama student in the Walton County school system. Everyone else in this production is employed in the actual profession that they are presenting. So let's get started. Today, an arrest warrant was issued for a 15-year-old female named J.C. Jenkins. Now, Deputy Miller will arrive at J.C. Jenkins' home to take her into custody. The charges on the warrant are for burglary, theft, and fraudulent use of a credit card. Now, you see J.C. burglarized a home selling two firearms, a computer, and the victim's wallet, which contained money and credit cards. Now, J.C. used one of the stolen credit cards to purchase items online that she really, really wanted bad, that her parents wouldn't buy for her. The burglary charge is classified as a first-degree felony because, you see, she became armed when she took possession of the firearm during the crime. The penalty for the first-degree felony, according to Florida law, now listen to this, is a term of imprisonment up to 30 years and or a fine up to $10,000. Both the theft and the fraudulent use of the credit card are third degree felonies. Now the penalty for third degree felonies is imprisonment up to five years in jail and or a fine up to $5,000. Hello, I am Sergeant Georgina Hicks. I am a correctional officer at the Walton County Jail. Once a person arrives to jail, their personal property is taken and bagged. He or she will get these belongings back once he or she is released from custody. All electronic devices will be confiscated since there are no cell phone calls or texting allowed once they are in detention. A juvenile may be detained in the county jail for no more than six hours. If the offense is serious enough, the juvenile can be detained in county jail but separate from adult inmates. The booking desk will inform the juvenile of their pending court date. JC will be able to leave the jail with a transport officer and taken to DJJ in Okaloosa County. Hi, I'm Juvenile Probation Officer Mike Murphy and I work for the Department of Juvenile Justice in Walton County. Once a juvenile is arrested, a juvenile probation officer is contacted. Unlike adult defendants, a juvenile is often assigned a probation officer. Immediately after the arrest, a DJJ detention risk assessment is completed. The assessment is a collection of information obtained about the juvenile and the crime that has been committed. The level of risk is observed to help determine if the juvenile is a danger to himself, herself, or others in the community. If any juvenile is charged with a defense involving a firearm or possession or involves a firearm, then he or she will be automatically detained in a, in a secure detention awaiting court. The risk assessment is based upon a point system. Less than seven points, the juvenile will be processed at the jail and released to his or her parents. Seven to 11 points, the juvenile will be placed on home detention. Being placed on home detention means that you cannot attend any social events. At 12 points or above, the juvenile will be placed in secure detention at DJJ. The risk assessment for J.C. Jenkins is above 12 points. Therefore, she will be transported to secure detention at DJJ. After a juvenile is arrested, he or she must appear before the judge within 24 hours for a detention review. This is also called a first appearance. J.C. Jenkins will be transported back to Walton County and has to appear before the judge. The judge will determine if J.C. will be detained or released to home detention. In this case, J.C. was ordered back to DJJ where she'll be awaiting a plea day, which will occur within 21 days. If a juvenile is detained at DJJ for 12 or more days, they will not be allowed to go back to public school. Once J.C. arrives at DJJ, she will be informed of the rules and regulations of the facility. There will be restrictions imposed on J.C. such as J.C. will be showered, de-liced, strip searched, given a detention uniform and underwear. Males and females are not allowed any verbal or visual contact. There will also be no phone use except for time, the time designated for parent contact only. There will be no calls to family members or friends. JC cannot use money or an account to purchase any kind of food or hygiene items. She will be provided three meals a day and one snack chosen by the detention center. JC will attend school and behave respectfully. The day and night is scheduled and there will be no deviations from that schedule such as sleeping in, 
staying up late, visiting with friends, and goofing off in class. The juvenile goes to court and is sentenced. If a juvenile receives probation, a juvenile probation officer will be reassigned to monitor that juvenile. Hi, I am Tom Nemesek, and I'm a lawyer who is employed as an assistant public defender. I represent juveniles in court to make sure their rights are not violated and they receive a fair trial. I'm appointed by the court whenever a juvenile requests legal counsel after an arrest because the family is indigent, which means they cannot afford to hire a private attorney. If the juvenile's family meets indigent status, then I am appointed either during the detention hearing or the first court date. If I am appointed at court, I will hand the juvenile client my business card with my phone number so they can call my office and set up an appointment to meet me and discuss the case. I was appointed to represent my client, J.C. Jenkins. Anything my client tells me is confidential, and I am bound by the rules of professional conduct not to reveal what was told to me without my client's permission. The charges that JC is facing are very serious, and she could be charged as an adult. I will receive all the facts, information, list of witnesses, and a list of evidence that the prosecuting attorney has received from the officer who worked the case. JC and I will go over the case, and she will make a determination as to how she wants to plea when she goes back to court. I will advise JC what's in her best interest, but the overall decision is hers. She can plead not guilty, guilty, or nolo contendere. Nolo contendere means that she is not saying she is guilty or innocent, but the court treats it as a guilty plea. In court, JC is called the defendant. Uh, if the defendant pleads guilty, then she gives up her right to appeal. If the defendant pleads nolo contendere, then she can appeal later but only if she points out something she believes is an error during court to the judge. If the defendant pleads not guilty, then the case goes to court before a judge. If she is tried as an adult, the case can be heard during a jury trial. Either way, the case will be tried and the determination of guilt will be based on the evidence presented. An appeal is when the defendant believes there was a mistake made in court that includes an error of law, an error of fact, or an error of judicial procedure. Once I research the case and interview all the witnesses and the victim, then I'll advise JC on how to proceed in this case. If the evidence shows a strong case for the prosecution, then I'll advise my client that it might be beneficial for her to take a plea deal that the prosecution might offer. Usually, a plea deal offers a less severe sentence than one imposed from a judge or jury who finds the client guilty. Hi, I'm John Reed and I'm a lawyer employed as a prosecuting attorney here in Walton County, Florida at the State Attorney's Office. I work with the arresting agencies and the officers involved in cases to evaluate the evidence in any given case. And my job is to prove the charges against the juvenile in court and at trial. I work with the victims of certain crimes to ensure that the juvenile who committed these crimes is punished uh, by a commitment program, which is basically juvenile jail time, probation, restitution to that victim, and or legal fines. I'm also present during the detention hearing, uh, which is the first time that I normally get to meet with the juvenile and their parents. After the detention hearing, the juvenile and DJJ keep in contact with the state attorney's office throughout the entire process while the case makes its way through the court system. Once the juvenile is declared delinquent by the court, meaning that the juvenile violated a state or federal law before they turned 17 years of age, then the court has jurisdiction over that juvenile and can order that the juvenile pay restitution for any damages they might have caused during a crime that they committed, and they can hold them responsible for these damages even after they turn 18 years of age. The juvenile can also be adjudicated guilty by the court. This means that the judge enters an order declaring that the juvenile requires some sort of intervention that is more severe than parentally applied discipline or parental supervision alone. In order to be committed to an uh, intervention program or commitment program, a juvenile must be adjudicated guilty by the court. If adjudication is withheld, then the judge can place the juvenile in a probation program 
under the supervision of the Department of Juvenile Justice. All juvenile cases are presented to the judge and never to a jury. It is a juvenile's decision to plead not guilty, guilty, or no contest. A plea of guilty or no contest has no bearing on any sort of sentence that the judge might order. The sentencing that a juvenile can receive can range from parentally applied discipline, juvenile probation, or a commitment program. Based on the crime, the evidence, the witness statements, and the juvenile's past history, the prosecutor in the state attorney's office can offer a plea deal that could be less severe than a sentence that a judge might order. Depending on the circumstances and the severity of a crime, a juvenile can be prosecuted as an adult for certain crimes that they committed as a juvenile. Hi, I'm Deputy Angelique Yates. I'm currently assigned as a court bailiff at the Walton County Courthouse. I'm present for court cases, both adult and juvenile. I'm here to ensure that the court rules are respected and I will arrest anyone who causes a disturbance in the courthouse. Some of the court rules are dress and manners. No one, including spectator, defendants, or victims, are allowed in the court unless they are in proper attire. No shorts, mini skirts, halter tops, tank tops, hats, or midriff shirts are allowed in the courtroom. If someone shows up dressed inappropriately, they will be advised to go home and change or they can wait outside the courtroom. Everyone will go through a metal scanner upon entry and all knives and firearms will be confiscated. Once everyone is seated in the courtroom, there will be no use of cell phones or other devices. There is a specific date set aside for juvenile cases. The juvenile will appear with a parent or guardian before the judge. If the juvenile is brought to court from a secure detention facility, they will be escorted into the courtroom from a separate entry point and put into a secured room until the judge is ready to hear their case. The juvenile will be shackled in cuffs if they are found guilty, I often fingerprint them and obtain DNA samples. The DNA sample is only taken in felony cases. The juvenile will then be transported back to DJJ or the county jail. If the juvenile is found guilty and only receives probation instead of further imprisonment, then they are released back to their parents. Hello, my name is Judge Kelvin Wells. I'm assigned to the Juvenile Delinquency Division for Walton County. After a juvenile has been arrested for an offense, they are brought before a judge if they were detained within 24 hours. At this detention hearing, it's the court's obligation to determine whether or not the public defender and the clerk are present. Parents and guardians are given notice of this hearing and are allowed to appear. After the determination of probable cause, the court would set a court date in which the juvenile is required to come back to court to face the charges. At the court date, the juvenile is required to enter a plea. There are three choices for pleas, guilty, not guilty, and no contest. If the juvenile enters a plea of guilty or no contest, then they will be sentenced by the court. If they enter a plea of not guilty, then they have the right to a trial. In juvenile court, there is no jury trial, there is only judge trials. At that trial, the state attorney has the burden of proving the charge beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. If the defendant is found guilty or enters a plea of guilty or no contest, they will be sentenced uh, to a program outlined by the court, including detention uh, and or probation. If the defendant obviously is found not guilty, then they are released of all charges. Next case before the court this afternoon is State of Florida versus J.C. Jenkins. All right, good afternoon, J.C. I'm Judge Wells. If you would, raise your right hand for me. You swear or affirm the testimony you give before the court to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, J.C., you're here before the court this afternoon for a juvenile detention hearing. The purpose of this hearing is to determine what the charges are against you, whether there's probable cause to detain you, to determine what your uh, status will be prior to court, and to advise you of your constitutional rights and your right to an attorney. Please understand that everything that's being said today is being uh, recorded and you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you. You understand that? All right. Uh, the arrest report alleges that you've been charged with 
burglary of a dwelling with a firearm, uh, theft, grand theft, which is a third degree felony, fraudulent use of a credit card, another third degree felony. The allegations in the report are that you burglarized a home, stealing two firearms, a computer, and the victim's wallet, which contained money and credit cards that you later used to purchase items online. Um, because of the severe allegations, the first degree felony, the firearms, the two third degree felonies, and the risk assessment sheet, you score over the mandatory 12 points, which would put you in the uh, secure detention range. Also, the court has considered the uh, testimony of your parents previously that you are a flight risk, that you're not abiding by the rules at the house, that you're truant, and you're basically uh, being disruptive at home. For those reasons, the court is going to remand you to secure detention awaiting your next court date, which will be set later for a plea. Thank you. Have a nice day. You now know the basic interaction between juveniles and the law. Every case is different and the sentencing does vary depending on the seriousness of the case and the actions by, taken by the juvenile. Remember that penalties are affected by the type of crime and by the juvenile's attitude and disciplinary problems that are reported from the parents and the schools. I hope every juvenile viewing this presentation will now think before they make any impulsive decisions that could lead to their arrest. If you still have any questions regarding juvenile detention, please ask a school resource deputy.